Hey man, what's going on? Hey man, uh, nothing much. I'm just about to review the first Wild F7 amplifier. I think it's just a really good, you know, amplifier. It just sounds so well, good. Well, cool, man. But isn't the first Wild like only 20 or 30 watts? Yeah, man, it's uh, 20 watts into uh, 8 ohms and 30 watts into 4 ohms. But, it, you know, but you don't need that kind of water, like 200 or 300, for, you know, per se. You know, you 20 quality watts. Yeah, but I heard that, you know, you you get like, you know, negative six dB or something like that every twice the distance. And then you only like, you know, don't you need a lot of power to like get those speakers playing really loud? I mean, I heard from my, you know, dealer that more is better, always, always more is better. Doesn't matter how efficient your speakers are. Well, not necessarily the case. Um, you know, if it sounds shit at first or you know, the second watt, then what's the point of having, you know, really a lot of wattage that just sounds like shit. So first watt really, you know, focuses on the first watt. That's what's first watt, right? So not necessarily, and you don't need a lot of wattage per se if your speakers are efficient. All right, man. Cool. I guess I'll go try the first F7 out then. I'll see you later. All right, all right cool, man. Just do your just, thing, man. Just remember, uh, just remember, man, four watts is enough for like a 90 dB speaker to be playing at like 89 dB efficiency, which is a lot. It's a lot. It, 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 it can play really loud. That's like concert level. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay here. And today we're taking a look at the first watt F7 power amplifier by Nelson Pass. Now, the first watt F7, just like my evil cousin twin suggested, is not about the pure amount of output uh, power capabilities. It outputs 20 watts into 8 ohms and 30 watts into 4 ohms and has a damping factor of about 100. It's never about having 300 watts or 400 watts or the sheer amount of power that it can provide. It's more about the first watt principle, which is if it sounds like shit at first watt, what's the point of having 300 watts after that? So Nelson Pass wants to really nail it down, get the right sound at the first watt. Nelson Pass has a very unique approach. And when you've been doing this, you know, amplifier designs and audio file gear designs in general for a very long time, uh, you begin to realize that there's always compromises. And I tell you this, you know, I'll tell, I tell you guys this all the time. There's always compromises with every single design. There's no such a thing as a perfect speaker. There's no such, a, no such a thing as a perfect amplifier. So what he ends up doing is he has different companies for different niches in the audiophile world and need in the market. So he has Pass Labs, which is another company that he owns. And he has that for his you know, consumer targeting specific markets in the audiophile world. And then he has his first watt, which is his little baby where he wants to experiment things. And the first watt is basically to get a really low powered amplifier sounding really good with you know, really sensitive speakers. And he's not looking to necessarily drive the most difficult to drive speakers in the world. And that's why the first one F7 is a class A amplifier and as of date, the first one F7 has the lowest amount of parts, uh, the fewest parts used in an amplifier in the first watt line. And so what that does is basically to use less parts is always good. It's never good to have a capacitor or stuff like that. And we're so used to having these chunky you know, amplifiers with a lot of parts in it to make it sound better and to correct for certain things, to measure well and whatnot. Uh, to lower the distortion and all these things, then when you look at a first watt amplifier, you may think, wow, that's that's pretty empty. But that goes same for a lot of good amplifiers like me. 
if you open up a name amplifier, the first comment that I get from a lot of people is that, wow, it's empty. There's not much in there. And that's the whole thing. It's not about the number of components in there. Usually, actually, less parts actually equate to better performance overall. So the first one, like I said, the F7 is the least amount of parts inside the amplifier. It has RCA single-ended inputs in the back and a pair of speaker binding posts and then a switch to turn on the amplifier. And that's it. So in terms of inputs and outputs, it's very simple. Topology-wise, it's very simple. In terms of its aesthetics, it's very simple. And it has a second harmonic and third harmonic distortion. A little bit of third harmonic distortion. And now people are going like, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, Jay. Distortion is a bad thing. I thought this was a good amplifier. Good amplifiers have the lowest amount of distortion, the best measuring, you know, noise floor, etc. Well, not necessarily. The second harmonic distortion and third harmonic distortion is to add musicality to the amplifier. And it was pretty proven that certain distortions actually improve the musicality of an amplifier, while, you know, odd order, odd order distortion and the higher orders actually make the amplifier sound bad. So that's one of the reasons why tube amplifiers sound uh, better than solid states and it's actually easier to design because tube amplifiers have natural second harmonic distortion while the solid states is easy to have a higher order distortion if it's not controlled for it. And that's why a lot of components have a lot of parts to correct for that kind of stuff and et cetera, et cetera. So the first one F7 is a pretty smart design if you think about it and also it actually employs negative feedback and a little bit of positive feedback to control for reactive speaker loads. So it's done the right way as expected of Nelson Pass design. Now, what's interesting is that even though my evil twin was raving about like power and you know stuff like that, he's like the majority of the people out there looking for the most powerful amplifier. I see a lot of the times people are like looking for 300 watts, 400 watts, the more is better. And this is not necessarily the consumer's fault. It's actually the fault of a lot of the reviewers like myself and also the dealers who always talk about more is better, more wattage, more wattage, more wattage. Now that's easier said than done. And also it is very hard to get really good high powered amplifiers um, at a budget price of you no know, less around $3,000, which is what the price point of the uh, first watt F7 is at. So to get it really correctly, you don't need a lot, a lot of that power. And I've said it, you don't need 300 watts or 400 watts. And let me tell you why. Uh, speakers these days are 86 dB or 90 dB in efficiency. And a lot of Tecton speakers are much more sensitive than that. Clips speakers are more sensitive than that. And there is very few speakers that's you know less sensitive than 85 dB in today's day and age, unless you're that kind of fanatic about hard to drive speakers. And you shouldn't be looking for the highest output capability of an amplifier or the highest wattage rating of an amplifier for difficult to drive speakers anyways. What you should be looking for is the ability of the amplifier to control for the different impedance swings and difficult load of a speaker. And to give you a reference, magnet pan speakers, which I've had for a very long time, and also I've had almost virtually every single model. I've worked with it for on a daily basis. I paired up a, a, up a lot of different amplifiers with the MagnaPan speakers, and sometimes it was 200 watts, sometimes it was 300 watts, sometimes it was 1,200 watts, and sometimes it was class AB, sometimes it was class D, sometimes it was class A. And what you find is that it's not necessarily the case that higher wattage amplifiers drive the MagnaPans better. In fact, sometimes like Neem, like Hegel, which has like 75 watts per channel, you know, 100 watts per channel, whatever, is actually better with the magnet pants and drives it much better than a amplifier that's 200 watts or 300 watts per channel. So that's something to think about. And remember that it's not necessarily the case that low wattage means less driving capability. It's about the quality of the component, it's about the quality of the amplifier. And at the end of the day, you would have to try it yourself. But to give you a reference, why you don't need a lot of wattage to begin with in most application, it's because if you have a speaker that's 86 dB or 90 dB in sensitivity, for example, you're losing about negative 6 dB for every double the distance. So if a Tecton speaker is rated for 90 dB in efficiency, for example, then that's at one meter. But nobody listens to speakers at one meter. 
So let's say you sit around 3 meters away. You're losing about negative 12 dB in distance. And the first Watt F7 can drive all the speakers I have in here currently for review, and they're all 85 dB and up in terms of its sensitivity. And I'm sitting about 3 meters away from the speakers. And wattage rating is also deceiving as well. Well, not deceiving, but kind of hard to grasp because if you have uh, 90 dB at 1 Watt, then you don't get 180 dB at 2 Watt. It doesn't double. What you end up getting is plus 3 dB increments in most cases every time a wattage is doubled. So from 1 to 2 watts, you get 90 dB. And then from 2 to 4 watts, you get plus 3 dB. And that's how it works. And so if you put that into calculation, for a 90 dB speaker, 4 watt is enough to get you to rock concert levels when you're sitting uh, 3 meters away. So for most speakers out there, it is not crazy amount of power you need. It's the right type of amplifier and the right driving capability and the pairing and the synergy of the amplifier to your speakers. So that's where the first watt F7 comes in. Really quality 20 watts into 8 ohms and really quality 30 watts into 4 ohms. Now, however, just like my evil twin said, yes, in certain cases, you do need more power. And those are with speakers that require a lot of power. And not necessarily for the driving capability, but because those speakers like to have a lot of power, a lot of torque aside. So for example, the Bacard S400, for example, I found that with that speaker, on a consistent basis, it sounds better with more and more power. And it just seems like it never can get enough, even though it's not the most inefficient speaker in the world. And there are speakers like that. So that depends on the speaker that you have. And if you have a speaker like that, then of course the first Wall F7 may be not for you. For the first Wall F7 really is an interesting amplifier because it's not the most best measuring amplifier in the world, and nor is it the best sounding in every single category possible. And so when you compare the different types of elements like imaging, sound staging, bass, and high frequency, the first Wall F7 doesn't necessarily excel in every single area compared to a different amplifier or a modern day amplifier. In fact, you can find a better imaging amplifier. You can find a better, you know, tighter bass in the amplifier for $3,000. But the first watt makes you forget about that. It doesn't matter anymore because the musical, the overall musicality of the amplifier doesn't make you think about those things. And when I hear a really good amplifier, I know it's a good amplifier because it's emotional. It connects you in a different way to your music. So when I hear the first Watt F7, I'm not analytic analytically making myself think, okay, I can get better, I can get better, you know, oh, it's lacking in this way, it's not lacking in that way. I only listened for those things and it was very hard for me to do so because of this review to tell you guys about the different elements. But when I'm actually listening to music with the first Watt F7, it's an amplifier that makes me play a track and then play another track and then play another track and then play another track over and over again because it's such a great experience and emotionally connecting device, musical instrument that's playing my music. That's what I get out of it at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if the imaging is great. It doesn't matter if the sound stage is large. It, it doesn't ma Those things don't matter because at the end of the day, the synergy between all those elements is so well done that the overall musical experience is incredible. But you guys probably want the individual elements as well. So let's talk about that. So the bass, the bass is not the most tight. In fact, it dips down very low. It's able to grasp down very low. It has a lot of texture, but it's not going to be the most punchy or the fastest bass in the world. In fact, it's going to resemble a lot of tube amplifiers in the sense that you may find it a little bit woolly. And that wooliness is not necessarily a bad thing in this case because it's very textured. It presents itself in a different way than a lot of solid state amplifiers that's rather dry in the bass area. It has a wetness to it as well. And then when it comes to the mid-range, the mid-range is silky smooth, very velvety, and it's very easy to listen to, yet it has breathiness to it. It has detail. It has a sweetness added to the chain. And so the mid-range is very, very good. And it's really hard for me not to compare two amplifiers to this because I know Nelson Pass is not necessarily looking to make a solid state amplifier that resembles a tube amplifier. That's not what he's going for. But it's really hard for me to not compare a tube amplifier to the mid-range of the first Wall F7 because the mid-range of the first Wall F7 is actually better than the Wilsonton R8 or a lot of the tube amplifiers that I fall in love with all the time. And in fact, 
the first wall F7 is probably the first solid state amplifier that I fell in love with as much as I did with tube amplifiers in terms of the mid range. And so the vocals are very, very sweet. Instruments are all around you. The sound staging is spectacular on this amplifier. And the high frequency is just sweet. It sounds to me like the LS35A, for example, just so sweet on the top end. And the first wall F7 does that. It has a sense of sweetness to it. No brightness, no brittleness, no harshness. Uh, it has warmth in the mid range. It has a fullness to the sound. And it's just inviting sound that you can just relax to and dial things down, just close your eyes and listen to music. And that's what, it, that's what the F7 is about. It's about the overall musical experience and the ability to listen to music without being analytical. It's about the music and not about the individual elements of the music. It all comes together to form this one gigantic ball of enjoyment. And for the most part, I was getting this type of sound with a lot of the speakers here. Like I said, any, anything 85 dB and up uh, can be driven by the first wall F7 and has those qualities. But for the most part, I was using my Tecton lower speakers and that's just sounded, just sounded fantastic. And what I'm describing right now is the most of that experience is with the Tecton speakers, with the sensitive speakers. So the first wall F7 is really made for sensitive speakers and it's really sounds, it just sounds so good with sensitive speakers. And I can't emphasize this enough because if you have sensitive speakers, the first wall F7 definitely deserves your attention. And in terms of pre-amplification, because the first wall F7 is an amplifier only, definitely don't use the Hegel pre-out. So when I had the Hegel H120 or the Hegel H190, uh, the pre-out section of the Hegel to my first wall amplifier sounded absolutely horrendous. I just thought the amplifier was broken or something was absolutely wrong because I think it's synergy wise, there's something wrong there, but you need a quality pre-amplifier with the first wall F7 and most things would work. And when I say quality, I mean anything that really works at this point because the first wall F7 sounds magnificent with most pre-amplifiers that I have, even the really budget ones. But what I do suggest is that uh, you use a tube pre-amplifier and I said this to Nelson Pass that I use a tube pre-amplifier and he says that it was basically designed for a tube pre-amplifier, whatever that means. But for sure, I've had big success with tube pre-amplifiers and I use my ModRite LS100. And recently I got in a very inexpensive tube preamplifier from uh, China that I'm reviewing currently. And that sounds really good with it as well. And that's coming up very shortly as well in terms of review. But that's what I can recommend for the first watt F7 if you want the maximum performance of the first watt uh, amplifier. Sensitive speakers, tube preamplifier. So there you have it guys. That's pretty much it for me. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one.